Hey all, we're back with another, yet another diagramming lesson. You, you know you love it. You know you love diagramming at this point. Um, you could probably notice that I'm wearing the same clothing here, so I've been, I've been like hardcore diagramming all day long. And then today we're going to move on to the next step here. Today we're going to learn how to diagram indirect objects yesterday, which in my world when I was making this video was literally five minutes ago. But uh, yesterday we learned about indirect or direct objects. Today we're going to learn about indirect objects and then because there are some extra words in some of these sentences I'm going to show you a little bit extra just because I, I have to do that. So <clears throat> here we have the first sentence, Jimmy gave the dog a bone. Okay, let's just take a look at the sentence before we try to diagram it and, and really quickly since you've learned about diagramming now you can easily spot some of the pieces of the sentence. First we have Jimmy, this is who the sentence, this is who the sentence is about, the noun, so that means it's your uh, simple uh, subject. We have action here in the word gave, giving something. So we now we know we have a verb, which is your your simple predicate. Okay, we have we can ask ourselves the question: Jimmy gave what? Well, he gave a bone, right? He didn't give the dog. He gave a bone. So we have a direct object here in the word bone. And now we have some extra words here. Whenever you have a direct object in a sentence then you need to see if you have an indirect object as well. This would be the word that's indirectly receiving the action of giving, you know, through the word bone, and who is actually receiving it in the end. Okay, the dog in this case is that indirect object. But again, you can use a trick that I teach my students. Jimmy gave what? He gave a bone. That The first answer to your first question is going to be your direct object. And then you can continue asking the question, Jimmy gave the bone to whom or what? The dog. So bone here is your direct and dog is your indirect. Okay, so here is how you uh, go about writing that. All right, so basically you start off like any other diagram. You're going to create your spots for your simple subject and predicate. We already said that Jimmy is our simple subject. We already said that Gabe is our simple predicate because it shows action. We found out by asking the question Gabe what that the bone is our um, direct object and we also found out that the dog that the word dog now keep in mind uh and the are different words so don't include those but the word dog is our indirect object now the way you write an indirect object here <clears throat> since the indirect object is connected to the verb basically you create this weird little line it's kind of like a little platform that the indirect object sits on it looks like a slanted line with a dog leg on it. Interestingly enough, we're putting the word dog here. Haha. -ha. So here we have the word dog, our indirect object. And now we only have a left. Sometimes when you're doing a diagram, you can kind of lose track of the words that you've already placed on there. So I like to sometimes cross them off in my sentence. So we have Jimmy, we use gave, we use dog, we use bone. We only have left two words. And it looks to me like these two words are being used to basically describe or tell us more information about the words next to them. Which dog? The dog. Which bone? A bone. That sounds to me like they are adjectives and they happen to be adjectives or be treated like adjectives anyway. They're actually articles. And all you need to do to write a, an article or an adjective on a diagram is you need to find the word they're attached to, draw a slanted line off the word, and you basically put the word on it. So we have the dog, slanted line coming off the dog, the, and we have a bone, Slanted line coming off the A. Here's a much more difficult sentence for you to give a try to, for, uh, try with to, to try to diagram. Do all the same things that I just did. I will pause quickly and give you a chance to work it, and then I will give you the solution. And we're back. That was quick. Um, so let's take a look at our sentence. We have Baylor University offered John a scholarship. Okay, so first thing we need to do is draw our chart. Hopefully I gave myself enough space down here. Pretty awesome using chalk again, by the way. <clears throat> um, so, first of all, we have to find out what our subject is. Who, is. who or what is the sentence about? Well, the sentence is about Baylor University. The, that, this is the entity that has offered John the scholarship. So the sentence is about Baylor. And the whole university name is the actual simple subject. So you would put Baylor. I'm just going to kind of abbreviate here for space, university. We look for the verb, the word that shows action. That's the word offered offered is showing action here. Now we ask ourselves the question, Baylor University offered what? Well, they didn't offer John, they offered a scholarship. 
that is your direct object. Not written up there. So you would put the word scholarship here. Now you would see if there's an indirect object, Baylor University offered what? They offered a scholarship to whom? Your indirect object will be John. That's to whom in the question. So you draw your little dog leg. You have John on here. Now let's go back and make sure we've used all the words. We've known we've used Baylor University. We've used offer. John's on the list. Scholarship's on the list. So there's only one word less left happens to be an article or an adjective in this, uh, in this case, like we used before, describing which scholarship? A scholarship. Draw your slanted line, and the word A goes on it, and there you have yourself another beautiful diagram. Hope you enjoyed another day of diagramming. I'll be back with some more stuff, uh, adding a little bit more to the diagramming chart in the future. Stay safe and stay healthy.